Grinding ranked can feel incredibly overwhelming at times. And for many of you, you might be wondering why it is you just can't seem to ever break that 50% win rate and actually start climbing the ranks. You're gaining 15 RR a win and losing 24 a loss. And it all just feels hopeless, right? Well, it's not all for nothing though. You're likely building up most of the skills you need to climb already. And with a little bit of guidance, you can definitely shoot up the ranks in no time. That's why in this video, we're gonna be giving you 20 tips that the pros are using constantly to help them carry games and climb the ladder. These tips were created by factoring a bunch of new strategies that teams have been implementing recently that you maybe haven't heard much about or maybe you just forgot about. By implementing these tips, you'll be able to ensure that you are one step ahead of your opponents, allowing you to win the rounds that matter in your games. The first tip we have is to use the Ghost in DM. When you load into a deathmatch, you have every weapon at your disposal. And while it may be tempting to use a Vandal or a Phantom, you should use the Ghost. This is because it forces you to be at a disadvantage, but not too difficult as just flat out using a Classic, as it can be quite frustrating to eliminate your opponents with three shots instead of two with the Ghost. It forces you to play very well in order to actually kill people as you need to two-tap that constantly. Once you've practiced enough with the Ghost and you've been two-tapping targets consistently, you'll notice how much easier it becomes to just land that one shot with a Vandal or Phantom. But remember, your warm-up shouldn't feel too difficult, but it also shouldn't feel too easy. You want to challenge yourself to make sure that you're able to improve as much as possible. Tip number two is debunking a common misconception as well as strongly encouraging you to use the operator. But wait, I main Sky. How can I use an op? Well, many people strongly believe that you can't use the weapon when you aren't playing Jet or Chamber, but honestly, this simply just isn't correct. Just because Jet and Chamber are already strong with the operator doesn't mean that you can't use it on anyone else. The Operator is one of the most powerful weapons in the entire game and can easily turn the tide of the match in one round. Using the Op is viable on any agent. You just can't play aggressively with the gun. On attack, you can post on an angle that you notice enemies are often challenging and easily open up the round for your team. And on defense, you can again post up and get the opening pick to help your team gain the advantage. If your team doesn't have anyone opping, especially if you notice the enemy team's comp lacks flashes, info, or smoke abilities, we highly encourage you to consider picking up the operator and start fragging. Tip number three is decreasing your agent pools. I know, I know, it's fun to play a bunch of different characters and try them all out, but the truth is you need to thin out your agent pool in order to actually learn how to play them well. For example, if you play every single initiator, try and pick just one or two and play them consistently. This will instantly help you become a better player. Many players may consider themselves a fill player, constantly picking whatever their team needs. They'll play Sage, Brimstone, Omen, Gecko, Sova, Fade, Yoru, Jet, Killjoy. I mean, the list goes on and on, but how many of those agents do they actually feel exceptionally good on? Probably not very many of them. Instead, you should try to specialize. Pick one or two agents and just focus on getting good with them. The better you get with these agents, the more you'll realize how powerful it can be to actually have mastery over one agent. Do this, and we promise you'll start to skyrocket in rank this act. And for everything else you need to climb ranks and improve fast, there's skillcap.com. We take the highest priority skills to climb ranks fast, such as aiming, and we break those down into a step-by-step -step course that's easy to understand. You're not only going to learn the basics, such as crosshair placement and clearing angles properly, but also more advanced concepts, like getting more multi-kills and repositioning. But that's not all though, as every week we release six brand new VOD reviews where Radiant coaches teach you how to climb out of the exact rank that you're stuck in. And if you're looking for something more personal instead, then we've got you covered with our new one-on-one -on -one coaching at our Skillcap Discord. 
all of this seems too good to be true well don't worry because we're backed up by a rank up guarantee which means if you don't significantly improve while actively using skill capped then you get your money back and we don't ask questions so what are you waiting for click the link in the description below and get the rank that you've always wanted tip number four is always smoke the spike not points around the spike we've all been in situations where time's ticking down you need to get moving but most of the time players will smoke regular spaces to try and cut off defender sight lines however if you smoke the bomb and tap it adds pressure to the defenders to push into the smoke or utilize some form of utility to clear you off the bomb What's even more is that if you smoke the spike, regardless of what angle defenders are playing at, they'll not be able to confirm if you're off it unless they push into the smoke. Now that means if you're unaware of the enemy's locations, it's even more incentivizing to smoke the spike as you don't need to gamble on what location the attackers are playing from. When retaking on defense, it should always be your first goal to get on site and then smoke the spike to get the pressure rolling. The next tip I have for you is positioning yourself in an off angle. An off angle is a random position that will not place you in your opponent's pre-aim. You want to make it as difficult as possible for the enemy to land their shot on you. And the best way to do that is stand in spots where they won't expect you. It can be on top of a box or right in the middle of the open, as long as it's somewhere that your enemies will not expect you to be at. This tip will easily help you get free kills, as your opponents will have to flick and then micro-adjust onto you in order to kill you. This tip is used very well by pros in nearly every single gunfight. They're constantly thinking about where their opponents are aiming and how they can outplay them by catching them off guard. If you're really looking to elevate your play, we highly recommend incorporating off angles quite a bit more. Tip number six, use rechargeable utility early. There are many pieces of utility that can be used on cooldown and come back after a certain amount of time. Some examples of these include Sova darts, Fade Eyes, Sky Flashes, and KO Knives, which are all good for obtaining early information and being one step ahead of your enemies. Another example is Omen Smoke, which will come back and can be used early on to take space in important parts of the map. The reason it's so important to use these abilities often is because it quite literally can double the value of the abilities by cycling them. You can use Sova's Dart to take long and then also also used to execute onto site. Then if you're lucky, you can use it again during the post plant even. That's three recon dart uses where many players might not even get two. This is part of the reason these agents are so valuable in a post plant because they basically always have utility coming back up that could potentially help their team win the round. Take advantage of these abilities as much as possible and you'll easily end up winning more games. Tip number seven, have a consistent warm up. Ever feel like you're inconsistent? Maybe you just play well one day, but play poorly the next. Start warming up. Even 15 minutes a day in the range and then a death match or two will help you become an even better player. You can also use third-party aim trainers such as Kovax or Aim Labs to help you fine-tune your aim. In fact, if you have Kovax, we actually have an official skill cap playlist that you can definitely use to help improve your aim. It's quite short, so it's not too overbearing and will absolutely help any player improve their aim. Just look up skill capped Valorant on Kovax and you'll find it. Tip number eight, know when to save. Sometimes rounds just simply are not winnable and you'd maybe get a kill and then die to the bomb or get traded. Keeping your rifle from the last round will help you maintain your economy for the next round or even maybe allow you to buy a teammate a weapon if they can't do so. If a round is unwinnable, feel free to save. There's no shame in it. Now there is an exception to this and it's when you have lots of money and your opponent's economy is weak. In this situation, it's worthwhile to take away as many weapons as you can. Now at the end of the day, the more important thing here though is that you know what you're going for in the round. Are you trying to play for a win or are you just playing for exits? If you're trying to play for a win, you need to do the things that are required to win the round. Maybe that means moving faster. Many players when retaking don't even give themselves enough time to retake. But if you're saving, your goal isn't even to retake. So don't force yourself into suboptimal fights. If everyone has to run towards you, you have the upper hand. 
end. Just hold and look for your exits. Tip number nine, destroy breakable utility. This one may seem like a given, but I can't count the amount of times players don't shoot Reina Leers, KO Knives, Sky Docks, any of Gecko's utility, Sova and Fade Darts. The list goes on and on and on and you get the point here. Most of the time you think, oh well, well my teammate will break it for me. But if everyone thinks like that, then the opponents will get way too much value out of their kits. It's everyone's responsibility to break enemy utility. If you see a recon, shoot it. If you see a Reina blind, shoot it. At the end of the day, your teammates likely won't do it anyway. And at least if you shoot it, your teammates might get the trade. But if you don't shoot it, everyone will likely just hide or bait each other and nothing good will happen for your team. Take the initiative, even if it's not technically your job, and just shoot the utility. This also applies for things like defaulting to break trip wires as well. But remember, if the enemy has a sentinel on their team, they have trip wires somewhere for sure. By breaking that trip wire or alarm bot, you'll force the enemy team to spread out much more, allowing your team to find new openings in the round. Our tip number 10 is about managing your economy. Think about purchasing light armor. Recently, professional teams have been experimenting and succeeding with using light shields as a good way to constantly go into rounds with a rifle, armor, and utility. The thought process behind this is that if the enemy team is on a buy round anyway, vandals will already kill you in one bullet to the head and four bullets to the body. This means that even with light armor, you're still going to die in the same amount of bullets from a rifle. So while you may be a bit more vulnerable to chip damage and lighter buys while using light armor, if you're taking advantage of this strategy on full buy rounds, you can oftentimes squeak out one or two extra full buys and a half by buying light armor instead, especially in matchmaking, where teams are a bit disorganized. It's even more important to have a rifle in your hands as much as you possibly can. Now, the best way to sway a round is with just a couple of good shots, and if you sway multiple rounds in a game, you'll win more games. Buying light armor more might be what you need to squeak out those extra few rounds and start climbing. Moving on to tip number 11, and quite possibly one of the most overlooked things by low elo players. Always think about the post plant when you're planting the spike. If you plant the spike in a location that's difficult to defend, like in tube on B side bind, you're basically losing your team the round. Spots like this are nearly impossible to hold during a post plant and will almost certainly result in more lost rounds than you'd like. Instead, always try to plant the spike in the open and against a wall. This way, the defenders will have a way more difficult time trying to defuse. Tip number 12, it's pretty simple, but incredibly important as well. Size up your mini map as big as it can go. Now, we don't care if you want to make it rotate or not, but the bigger your mini map is, the more easy it'll be for you to pick up information that goes across it. If you're ever wondering how Radiant level players are so aware, it's because they're constantly looking at their map and gathering information on the enemy team's whereabouts. You can only do this if you can see your map though, so crank those settings up and get climbing. For tip number 13, you're going to be mixing things up here. Now, many players practice counter strafing as they're ranking up, but they'll only ever strafe in a predictable fashion. Left, right, left, right, left, right. You're predictable. Instead, try something like this. Left, right, right, big strafe right, and then stop for the kill. By mixing up your movement, you can secure the kill in those prolonged gunfights a lot more easily than if you just keep dancing back and forth like a goober. Tip number 14, try to pretend like you're tethered to your teammates when you play Valorant. When you walk around the map, pretend there's an imaginary rope that's pulling you in the direction of your teammates. When one of your teammates pushes forward, it should pull everyone else with them. By treating Valorant like this, you'll assure that you're always conscious about making plays with your teammates and getting more value in your rounds. Tip number 15 calls for you to lower your sensitivity quite a bit. Now I know, I know, I know, pretty basic, but there's a ton of players who are playing on an outrageous sensitivity just because they don't want to try something different. It's going to feel bad for the first day or two, and honestly, I get it, but that feeling, it will go away eventually, and you'll find it much easier to aim accurately after you've done it. I've heard 
heard of some crazy sensitivities before, and we actually did a video recently where we played with 8,000 eDPI. It's ridiculous, and nobody should do this. Just lower your sensitivity to something more manageable, and you'll win more gunfights. Try to shoot for something around 280 eDPI if you can. For tip number 16, we recommend that you learn to play every single role. Most players only really feel comfortable on one or two roles, but by learning what each role does and how to play them, you'll round out your game knowledge and better learn how to play around your teammates. You'll also learn how you can request for them to help you as well. If you know what Gecko does and you know how he plays, you can request for your Gecko to make plays you would normally make and find the perfect way to compliment him how you'd want a player to complement your gecko play. This is just one example, of course, here. This works for every other agent as well. Also, just learn every role so you don't end up being that guy in Immortal who says, I don't know how to play smokes. That guy, he's a clown, and you don't want to be him. Moving on to tip number 17, develop set pistol strats on every map. Pistol rounds are some of the most important rounds in the game. And if you're just winging it every single time, you're not going to climb very efficiently. When I'm on offense on Haven, for example, I like to default control over garage and then double back and hit A. It's a simple strat you can call and it'll pull rotates towards mid and sometimes even bait out a flank that you can kill before slamming a site. This play works out really often for me because I've practiced the timings of it so often here, but maybe your play is slamming C site. But if you do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again, every time you're on Haven, you can start to figure out what works and what doesn't and then adapt that to your strategy. Maybe the strat you commonly do doesn't actually work as well as you thought it did. That means it's time to go back to the drawing board and find something a little bit better. Next, for tip number 18, we're going to talk about something we've talked about in a number of our guides recently. You should look to start the round near the spawn barriers almost every time. Now, this doesn't mean you're intending to run it down, but it does give you a far higher likelihood you'll have an impact. From the spawn barriers, you'll get the earliest info possible and you can start getting impact immediately. If you sit back, it's possible your teammates all take duels before you and get themselves killed, leaving you in an unwinnable situation. You should be desperate to have an impact in your games. Don't just sit back and wait for somebody else to win the game for you. Take control, gather info, and create pressure that the enemy team needs to deal with. For tip number 19, we're suggesting that you mute more players. Not just mute everyone, but too many players feel the need to leave players unmuted because they might say something impactful. But the reality is, no player ever goes from cussing out his team to making useful comms randomly. Just mute the person and move on with your life. The best part about this is if you mute a player and then get them in another lobby, they're still going to be muted so you can know who to dodge. Finally, though, our 20th tip, try to have fun with the game. Your aim will be better when you're relaxed and having fun. Nobody ever hit Radiant by hating the game, even if they might act like it sometimes. If you want to be successful at something, you have to enjoy the process. That's a lesson of life. And at the end of the day, it's going to take you thousands of hours to master Valorant, so you might as well enjoy it in the process. Now, we can speed that process up for you, though. Over at Skill Cap, we've got you covered with dozens of tailor-made courses that'll teach you everything you need to know about climbing in Valorant. We'll teach you everything you need to know about mastering your mechanics so that you can start playing at an immortal level in no time. Now, along with this, we also upload tons of VOD reviews every week that our coaches record from looking at players just like you. So rather than just paying for one $200 coaching session on any other platform, you can get access to hundreds of sessions for just a few bucks. Not only that, but our coaches are also at the ready in our Discord to take a look at your gameplay and tell you exactly what your issues are. Now, if by chance you don't find value from all of the other things that we offer on our website. Use the link below for a discount link in your purchase today. And other than that, we here at Skillcapped want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.